Welcome everyone. I'm here in racesmooth.r and our learning goal for this walkthrough is simple. We're going to learn how to add a smooth trend line to any scatter plot. All right, let's load the three packages we'll need for this uh, walkthrough. Tidyverse, ggplot2, and Mosaic. Make sure those are installed and go ahead and get them loaded up here. The data we're going to work with isn't in a CSV file, rather it comes as distributed as part of the Mosaic package. So you won't have to load it through import dataset, you'll just load it via the data command since it's pre-distributed as one of these packages. Let's take a, a brief look at the first several lines of this data set. You might guess that it is about a 10 mile race and, and so you would be correct. Every row in this data set is a runner in the Cherry Blossom 10 mile road race uh, that happens every spring in Washington, DC. We've got some basic data on these runners, uh, what state they're from, Virginia, Maryland, etc. There's a lot of those given that it's in the DC area. Their age and years and their sex, male or female, in this data set. Uh, the variable of interest here is net. That is the runner's net finishing time. In other words, how many seconds it took them between crossing the start line and crossing the finish line. And that can be different than this overall time right here, uh, given that it often takes a runner uh, you know, many, many minutes in one of these large road races to actually get across the start line at the beginning of the race. So net is how long it took you to run the race. Let's just do a basic scatter plot here, and I'm going to save it as an object called P0 for subsequent layering in ggplot. We're going to have a, a, a scatter plot that has age on our x-axis and net finishing time on the y-axis, and here it is. Uh, and uh, you know, maybe a general upward trend tends to uh, occur to you as you look at this plot. Uh, as folks get older, on average, they tend to finish the race a little bit slower, perhaps uh, no surprise as an overall trend right there. But the details of this trend are a little bit difficult to pick out by eye, and that's just because there are so many points here, so many individual runners in this race, you can't tell. Is it a monotonically increasing trend? Is it a linear trend? Is it flat and then a little bit of a kick up at the end? How would we describe the overall expected value of net finishing time as a function of age? Well, a very handy layer to add in ggplot is called a smoothing layer. It's easy to see by, by its behavior. Let's take our basic plot up here and add a geom smooth to it, again with the same x and y variables here, and you'll see exactly what happens. You get your scatter plot, and then you also get a smooth trend line, or maybe we shouldn't call it a line, more like a smooth trend curve that, at least in this instance, looks to go up. In other words, you get a little bit slower on average as you, uh, as you, as you age, and then you actually go down and then back up again. Okay? So, uh, one thing to notice about this geom smooth layer that we've added is that by default it gives you error bars right here and it comes in blue. We're going to talk about the interpretation of these error bars, but effectively the width of that little uh, ribbon right there represents some kind of statistical uncertainty associated with the actual value of where that blue line really ought to be. Again, that's for another uh, walk through in another class. Uh, you can also manually change the color of that trend line or trend curve. I'll pick a very fetching shade of lime green right here. You could pick anything from normal colors to fairly fanciful colors like salmon. I'll go back to lime green right here since I like the look of that. Uh, if you wanted to suppress those error bars, you can add a simple little flag, SE equals false. SE stands for standard error right here. And then you'll just get the line itself and not the error bars. Now, uh, if multiple layers, here's another little trick in ggplot2. Uh, you notice that both our basic geom point layer and our geom smooth layer both shared the same aesthetic mapping, age to the x location, y uh, being the net finishing time. Uh, now, if multiple layers share the same aesthetic mapping as they do in our plot right here, you might actually find it more concise to put the mapping statement, the AES x equals age, y equals net, upstairs in the ggplot command itself. And the reason you might do that is because then you don't have to repeat it twice. It gets inherited by every subsequent layer, that same aesthetic mapping. So you'll get exactly the same result just in blue right there. You can do it either way. And if this little bit confuses you, don't worry about it. Um, now, another nice thing about geom smooth is that it plays nicely with other ggplot layering functions. So in particular, if we execute lines 32 and 33 right here, you'll notice that I get now a faceted scatter plot and a faceted trend curve fit via geom smooth. One for female runners in the race, one for male runners in the race. Uh, and also what's very interesting here is that when we looked at all of the runners together, 
it looked like there was a rise and then a dip and then a rise again. Whereas when we disaggregate by sex, it looks like it's less of a dip and more of a plateau. And I'd invite you to think about why that might be, but it's kind of a, a mild version of Simpson's paradox here, where the answer that you get when you data, do data analysis uh, can often depend on what level of aggregation or disaggregation that you approach the data set with. Here, if we aggregate across uh, both genders here, uh, we, it looks like we get at least a slight subtle dip right here, whereas when we disaggregate uh, into males and females, not really much of a dip so much as a plateau throughout runners' late 20s, uh, early 30s, re really on even until the early 40s here, okay? Uh, we can also uh, add smoothing layer to a facet grid. So I'll define a variable here uh, that's going to be a, a local indicator variable here. Since this took place in Washington, D.C., I'll define my local states in that area as being anyone in D.C., Virginia, or Maryland. Pretty wide geographic area, but seems reasonable. And I'll define a variable called local that using if else that says if your state is in one of these three states, we'll call you local. If your state is in any other state, we'll call you out of state. Okay, so let's add that to the data frame. Uh, and now if you look at the first several lines, we've got now local. And all these folks are local. Presumably there's some folks at the maybe... Maybe they're at the end uh, that are out of state. There they are, New Yorker, somebody from all the way from North Dakota to D.C. to run among the cherry blossoms in, uh, in April. Now let's do a facet grid, both by male, female, and by local out of state. Facet grid looks a lot like facet wrap, except there's now two things. You can pick a, a row stratifying variable and a column stratifying variable, and then add a smoothing layer. So now this top row corresponds to females, bottom row corresponds to males, left column to local, right column to out of state. And in each case, we get a scatter plot for those runners corresponding to that particular combination of circumstances, as well as a smoothing layer.